Hey YouTube, your favorite YouTuber here, Ian Press 40 is here. And I want to say welcome back to another episode of Racing Topics with Ian Perez. If I'm correct, I believe this is the 40th episode of this series. And today, it's that time of the year again. Daytona Speed Weeks Review. Last year, I did this. And because of not only the Daytona 500, but... But Daytona Speed Weeks in general means a lot to me as a motorsports fan. I love, I enjoy the racing, the anticipation, the practices, the qualifyings. Like getting ready for the big events and Speed Weeks at Daytona. I love Daytona. It's my all time motorsports track. And it means so much to me that I always do. I this is my second time I did like a Daytona 500 marathon until we arrived to the actual race day. Um, um, I'm doing videos about it. So yeah. So in case if you're wondering why I'm doing like a bunch of like Daytona, Daytona videos in this series, like I did with Speed Weeks so last year, the road course, uh, the August oval race, and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, and this year's Rolex 24, because Daytona means a lot to me as a motorsports fan. So, with that being said, let's begin. Alright, so where do we start? First, we start off with the 2021 Bush Clash. It is the first race on the road course, and personally, I was excited uh, last March when I heard the news. I was so excited, and coming to the race, I was still excited, but I was a bit nervous. How the racing would go because last year in the August race, uh, NASCAR never did like practice qualifying, I, and they brought the the giant spoilers with the 750 package. I'm, and honestly, to begin with, before that race, I'm like, no, that's a terrible idea, and that's why that race is mediocre. And honestly, coming into this year with a, with a smaller spoiler. I was still excited, but a bit skeptical at the same time because they didn't do practice. And honestly, the race turned out to be amazing. I'm not just saying this because I, I'm biased for stock car road course racing. I really mean it. The Bush class last Tuesday was amazing. I really mean it. The racing itself, it was pretty good. There was a lot of passing. There was like two wide battles, three wide battles. Like, it was just beautiful. And having it at night, that's amazing. And the battle between Ryan Blaney and Chase Elliott, it was amazing. It's just two bros going at it. And holy crap, they messed up at the final corner. Chase getting into Ryan Blaney. Blaney spun into the outside wall. The Blaney bad luck, still going, pain. And as a Hendrick fan, Chase lost it as well. But as a Kyle Busch fan, the fact that's like the 2018 Charlotte Roval. Kyle Busch was right there at the at the right place at the right time, and he won the 2021 Busch Clash. And that's that's awesome. That's awesome. I really hope he has a better season. And, um, so yeah, and also Truex was a contender, but then he messed up. The racing itself, it was, it was good. I loved it. I'm looking forward to next week's, uh, Daytona World Course race. Yes, they will have the lower package once again, and it's going to be longer than the Clash. And I really hope it is better than August, without a doubt. Fingers crossed on that, boys and girls. And we got trucks racing Friday night. Xfinity at 5 on Saturday. Cup at 2.30 on Fox. Can't wait. Can't wait. So, they turn, uh, so the Bush Clash, good race. Now, qualifying. Yeah, I, there's been some controversy with the, the like and dislike ratio. And a couple in the comments below about me saying my opinion about Alex Bowman winning the poll. Here's the thing. Like, imagine, like, like... I mean, David Lamb could do it. Like, I'm not trying to be like David Lamb, but like, think about it. It's just when it comes to Daytona 500 qualifying, they want storylines. They want whatever it takes for anyone to tune into that race, the Great American Race, 
And yeah, they would fiddle like qualifying for storyline purposes. So that's kind of the reason why like I said it. But then again, Hedgewick Motorsports are always fast. Like they're fast. So I can't really say uh, qualifying was rigged uh, for Bowman after Jimmy retired and Bowman's taken over to 48. It wasn't really. But like, I mean, Toyotas were fast in practice. All of a sudden, Bowman, Byron, Schindler, Bro, well, like, what? It's not really rigged, okay? So, Bowman won pull. And then the dual races. Honestly, the first duel, I know like there was like single follow racing for most of the parts out there. We saw like three wide racing at the beginning of the race. Um, honestly, the first duel race, it was a clean race. Um, it was decent, it was okay, but then the finish, uh, coming to the finish, still, still great, still great. I wish Bell won that, but hey, that's okay. Good job for Eric Amarola. And I will get to, like, like, clean racing later, because you know how fans are. And second duel, wow, what is there to say about the second duel race? Oh, man. I don't know, like, the racing was just fantastic because the grip was washed away after the rain. So they were pretty much, what do you call it, like green, the track is green or something like that after like the rain washes away the previous um, race and then the rain and then rain ruins it. I don't know. I, I'm, I, I'm not a scientist. I'm not something like that. I'm just, I'm just a young motorsports fan. <laughs> but um, yeah. The second door race, it was fantastic. And the fact that Bubba Wallace was almost there and Austin Dillon, wow. We saw two wide, three wide racing. Oh man, it was amazing. It was amazing. Honestly, the, the second door race, one of the best races of Speed Week so far. And gotta give credit to Bubba Wallace for Keeping his, no keeping his nose clean throughout speed weeks. Except for the last lap of last night's 500. But we'll get to that later. So Austin Dillon wins the second duel race. Um, there was controversy about the duel races. It, sorry. It's our old pal, the charter system. Here's what doesn't make sense. So in the first duel race, Ty Dillon, Timmy Hill... Ryan Priest were trying to like get into the 500. Here's the problem. Ryan Priest got into the 500 based on speed. They don't have a charter, they're an open car. And the fact that Priest who was in the 500 regardless thanks to for being on speed uh beating Ty Dillon and that Ty doesn't make it. That's that's confusingly messed up. That's honestly so stupid. Like, if Ryan Priest, or if anybody that's an open car gets into the 500 on, on speed, they should not be eligible for the battle to get into the 500 for a transfer spot. They should not. But because it's NASCAR, they did that. So, unfortunately, Ty Dillon did not get into the 500 because of the stupid charter system. Ty Dillon got robbed, okay? I said it. Ty Dillon got robbed by NASCAR. He got screwed by the charter system. Ryan Priest should have been in regardless. Like, they should have given it to Ty. But no, you gotta be ahead of, like, an open car who was fast. That shit doesn't make any sense. I don't understand that. Even Chase Elliott doesn't understand. If the drivers don't understand NASCAR's idea or whatever, that's a problem. That's a problem. Even the drivers pretty much don't like it. But and it's NASCAR. They're not going to change anything bad. I don't know. God knows how long. But <sighs> Unreal. Unreal. Let's just move on. So... It is truck day. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I stayed up till three for my uh, 500 reaction video to be uploaded. So yeah. So anyway, the truck race. What is there to say about this? 
Honestly, the start of the truck race was honestly, it pissed me off, honestly. The fact that not everyone had the chance to go green and already wrecked, and a couple of drivers already DNF'd before they even started the race, like James Busher is one of them. That's fucking stupid. I know it's because Tanner Gray had problems. Unfortunately, Tanner had problems before the, the race even started and couldn't even complete the first lap, so pain. And I felt horrible more for James Busher. He has not raced in five years, raced at Texas, finished like in top 20. And Busher was getting to do like more races, like eight or nine. We're getting ready to see Busher race at Daytona and then, yeah, that stupid start. That's so stupid. And the, the, the truck race, it was pretty, it was all right. The thing that bothers me about the truck race is that it was a caution fest. It was a wreck fest. Like, yeah, yeah, there was some good racing. There was. However, the fact that it was a caution fest, I don't know. It was just, it was just a turn off. But the finish was still, the, the battle for the win coming into the last lap, it was amazing. But I hate the fact that it was like a wreck, it was a wreck fest. Unreal, unreal. Well, what, what do I know? But yeah, decent race. Insane finish. Everybody thought we were going to see Tony Roper and or Jordan Anderson win. Nope, here comes Ben Rhodes, the fan favorite of trucks. Stole the show and finally wins Daytona. And, and Jordan Anderson coming home second again to a Thor Sport truck. How unlucky can you be for Jordan? Man, can this guy catch a break? God, the fact that Jordan finished second to a Thorsport truck again, holy hell. Wow. When will Jordan win? And Corey Roper. He had the race won as well, but I don't know. But these underdogs, though, the underfunds, the, the small teams, you got to love it when they finish extremely well. And speaking, of under, uh, and speaking of underdog teams, we will get to that later. So, decent race. Ben Rhodes won. Um... It was a decent race. It was a wreck fest, a caution fest, which turned me off. But hey, still a thriller at the end. Can't complain too much. Now we get to the ARCA race, the the season opener of the ARCA race. And honestly, I thought the beginning of the race, the first half of the of the race, the ARCA race, I thought it was pretty good. There was like two by two, like nobody won single file. Um, a lot. It was just mainly like double wide racing. And honestly, like it was a pretty decent. Then the second half of the race, um, eh, it was not good. It was not good. And then like the fact that Arca still has a one lap shootout, I still find that weird. Oh yeah, the one lap shootouts for like Daytona and Dega only. And honestly, I'm like, that's just a complete buzzkill because like the cars can't. It takes like a lap and a half for like. The cars and restricted play races go up to speed. And the fact that it takes one lap to finish a race and nobody and nothing happened. I don't know. That was just a turnoff. Like I'm not complaining about Corey Heim winning the race. Second career Arca win. He did he had he ran a great race. But the it was just a buzzkill. Like I ain't no show seeker casual fan looking for like wrecks and excitement, but like if like if a decent race happens, it happens, and I don't I don't know like. But you know how NASCAR fans always get their they always get their hopes up, and then they always bitch and whine and cry about everything. Fucking pathetic. And don't get me wrong, I don't like the Super Speedway Arca package as well. But personally, I thought the race was actually decent. So yeah, and also shout out to Jamie Little for being the first female. Announcer, play-by-play uh, -play announcer on the booth, I believe. She did a great job. I'm looking forward to see her commentate more races this year on Fox Sports 1. She did a great job. Bill Parsons, they did good. Chase Briscoe did a good job as well. And then we get to the Xfinity Series. Um, Pretty okay race. 
pretty decent race. I do love Arca and Xfinity Series, but like both races were decent. Um, there's a reason why I'm not a huge fan of stages, not because of the gimmicks, but because it's pointless and because of what happened with stage two. You got these drivers so desperate for points that don't really mean anything because you're gonna get eliminated in the chase. And you get like Brandon Jones crashing and then coming up to the field and then Cody Ware hits him. Yeah, that was a bad wreck. But like the fact that we have that kind of gimmick and then you see that kind of horrible thing happen. I'm like, why do we have this? Like, why do we have this? It's just disappointing. It's just... It's just disappointing that stages are still a thing, especially when it's under yellow, especially when there's like points that don't mean anything. And like you got drivers so desperate for points that don't mean nothing. Very disappointing. So I'm not really gonna blame Bl uh, I'm not really gonna blame Brandon Jones for making moves to what score whatever points. It's NASCAR with their gimmicks. I know this will be controversial again, but like, I, I don't care at this point. It's just disappointing. And of course, right fuss here and there, but not really as much. Um, and then, damn, Brent Moffat though, driving for our motorsports, almost won the race. And Austin Sindrick though, personally, I still don't like Austin Sindrick. What a race for him. What a what a speed week for him. He's in the 500. He wins the Daytona Xfinity race. I'll give him credit. That was good for him. And that was and that's the first win. That's for that's Penske's first win for the Xfinity team to win the Daytona Oval. So yeah. But I thought the race was alright. Uh, I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. And of course you got fans bitching and complaining about the package. I can understand the package is not great. It's decent. They're running, they're basically having like cup cars package because they said like, oh, they're racing hard or whatever. And, um, and like, it's hard to drive those cars. That's what I mean. Well, like, I don't know what you can do. I get that the package is not the greatest, but like, still, it was still an all right race. Not the worst. 2019 was still the worst. So yeah, Cedric wins, decent race. Um, uh, my Cali drivers, I think they finished decent. Justin Haley racked out. Mafia finished second and one of my favorite drivers. I'm looking forward to the season. Tony, uh, Tony Stewart, I almost said Tony Kanan. Tony Stewart did a good job on the booth. Alongside with Clint Boyer and, uh, and I'm at Adam Alexander. Good stuff. Good stuff. And then the best for last. The 2021 Daytona 500. I have been waiting to make this video about the 500. There's been, there's so many problems about that race. And I really hate to go negative about it. The 500 is my all time favorite crown jewel event for any form of motorsports. And I really don't want to be negative about it, but unfortunately I have to. There's a lot of problems. The fact that we have weather as a problem and the fact that everything is fine the weather's fine just cloudy between like noon or early morning till like three whatever like we could have we we could have like started the race earlier because i remember the 2016 talaga spring race because there was weather on the way they started the race earlier they completed the whole race and then after that it rained like did fox not learn anything from last year I'm still pissed off about last year because they had plenty of time to start the race earlier. And I'm not going to, by the way, I'm not going to blame Trump about it. It was a special, it was a special occasion. It's just Fox coming up with stupid schedules. It's just a broadcast number coming up with shitty start times. Like, here's the thing. The fact that we're starting at three, even where, when we're about to rain, is stupid. I don't know what's the problem with having start times at noon or one. Guess what? Even the West Coast fans are okay waking up at nine in the morning to see a race that starts at 12 in the afternoon, Eastern time. They're okay with it. 
They're fine with it. And that's not where the problem ends. On lap 15, we had ourselves a 16 car crash. Everybody was racing way too hard. There was weather on the way. And it was just a racing incident for Bell and everybody. I'm not going to blame anybody like a, like a toxic NASCAR fan. I'm not those fans. But the fact that everybody was racing extremely hard early in the going with weather on the way. And then a crash happens. And then it rains. And then we got away for almost six hours. That's stupid. That's stupid. I know everyone's getting desperate to like beat the rain, but... That's still unacceptable. That's pathetic. It took out a bunch of good cars, and that's just disappointing. That's what pisses me off. That still pisses me off, honestly. Like, start the race at 1 or 12 or earlier. I don't care. When there's weather, if there's weather on the way, start the race earlier so we can get it over with as soon as possible so we don't have to wait. That's strike two for Fox. They did not learn anything from last year. That's extremely disappointing. And I'm, I am not pleased about it. So after an almost six hour wait, um, we finally went underway. Um, and not too bad of a race. And then, no. Oh yeah, another problem. William Byron threw debris on his back bumper all over the like turn one not all over but there's like a couple of pieces of debris and it, and it was on track and what did nascar do nothing they kept it green there was debris on track and they kept it green and guess what it took to take out to throw out a yellow quinn hop running over the debris and then having a tire down collecting chase briscoe what the fuck was that that was so stupid that could have been avoided if they threw out the yellow for Byron's debris. And also, Byron, I don't think Byron got penalized, right? The fact that Quinn Huff got screwed by NASCAR. That, that just pisses me off. Like, I'm already feeling horrible about 500. We're not even, like, halfway. We're not even halfway to the race. So, they were single foul for, like... Most of the, I don't like to say this, but like the first stage. And then like, and last lap of stage one. Yeah, it was exciting and all that. Thankfully, nobody wrecked. And in stage two, I think there was like a couple of wrecks. Um, I don't know. It's just a blur. Oh, Bell. Bell was just a wrecking ball all week, honestly. He was all over the place. And I love Bell, but like, chill, dude. It's your first year with Gibbs. Relax, bro. Relax. Um, still single foul and okay race. And then the last lap of stage two. Holy crap. Holy hell. The fact that nobody wrecked. Let's go. And then down to the final stage. Nothing happened. It's just single foul racing. And then coming into the white flag. Like, everybody starts making moves. Like, they had, like, a couple... They had a few laps to make some moves. And then you got Joey Logano. You know he's dangerous. That's super speedways. Blocking. Then McDowell pushed Kozlowski. Then Logano wrecked. Kozlowski wrecked. Michael McDowell voted. Then everybody crashed. Kozlowski hard into the wall. He got into, like, a bit into the catch fence. And then Kyle Busch, Austin Sindrick... Um, a, a bunch of other drivers piling up into Kozlowski and it was a fireball. That's what freaked me out. I didn't expect that to happen. I was screaming five times. So that's what I was screaming about. That was, that was nasty. That was a nasty crash. That was horrifying. And then honestly, I'll give NASCAR credit for throwing out the yellow coming into the finish. I know we were in turn three, but still it was a horrible wreck. So, out of all people, Michael McDowell wins the 2021 Daytona 500. And honestly, I still can't believe that happened. I still can't believe he won the 500. It's not really a fluke because he's always a factor of super speedway races, especially the 500. So, good on Michael McDowell. And Chase Elliott lost to a front row motorsports. Yikes. 
So, yeah. So, what do I think about the 2021 Daytona 500? It was a bad 500. It was bad. There were so many problems. Too many commercials. Um, like, I would defend, like, single file racing for, like, earlier in the race because there was, like, fog and, like, hey, we just want to get it over with quicker. And then, like, when it went single file after the fog was cl cleared up, I'm like, I don't know, like, just, of course, that was a terrible 500. One of the worst 500s I've seen. Pretty much, like, top three. And, and Fox did a horrible job to, Fox did a horrible job. From, of course, not start, not making NASCAR start the race early. And too many commercials. And there were, like, some complaints about the broadcasting. I don't know too much about that because, of course, I was collaborating with Blue Jimmy 48 fan with his friends and my friends. So I don't know too much about it. But it was just a bad race. However, there are positives about this terrible race. There's some positives. We got the we got the race underway. No postpone into today. Thank goodness. Um, nobody was sent to the hospital. That's also great. Um it's not a wreck fest like earlier, but still disappointing. Still disappointment. Even like it was a disappointment to begin with for the way they raced hard early in the going and crashed. Yeah. Aside from that 16 car crash, I think I think it was a clean race till the end. Personally, I prefer clean races over nonstop caution fest and demolition derbies. That's just me. So, yeah, there's some positives, but there's just mostly negatives about the 2021 500. So, the best Daytona race of Speed Week it belongs to the second dual race. Um, and then, what else? Trucks is the second best. Xfinity was third best. The first dual race was fourth, was fourth best. No, actually, Arca's fourth best. Uh, fuck, hold on, hold on. Let me think. Second duel was the best. Uh, Trucks was decent. Second best. Um, Xfinity was third best. I'm going by, like, how they were racing. Overall racing, not just the crashes, cars. I'm not that kind of person. And then, um, Arca was fourth best. The first duel race was fifth best. And the worst race of Speed Week was the 2021 Daytona 500. You heard it here. That's my personal opinion. But just because we had a bad race, bad 500 doesn't mean I'm not excited for next year. Of course, no matter if the 500 was good or bad or mediocre, I always look forward to the 500 next year and every year. I, I just love that race so much. So yeah, I'm just happy we got this race double with uh, in one night. And, um, also, like, when I was screaming, like, after, like, I stopped filming, I'm like, holy shit, is the neighborhood gonna call the cops thinking, oh, someone just got murdered in this house? But thankfully, no cops showed up thinking it was a murder. So, I'm good. Everything's fine. So, before I end this video, what do you guys think about Speed Week? Uh, 2021 Speed Week, did you like it? Did you not like it? Personally, I thought it was, like, the craziest Speed Week I've ever experienced. Thankfully, nobody got hurt and all that stuff. And also for Arca, I forgot to add, like, hey, that means, like, I know maybe, like, a mediocre, decent-ish race, clean race. But, hey, at least there's no wreck fest. Uh, not a lot of cars are out of the race. That means you can save up money for, like, the next race. That's how they go as well. Who knows? Looking forward to Arca. And, uh, yeah. And I just want to say a big thank you to Blue Jimmy 48 fan for the amazing collaboration. Looking forward to do some more in the future. And it looks like our fans enjoyed it as well. It looks like you guys enjoyed it as well. So yeah. That's going to do it for today. I really enjoyed it regardless of like some bad. There were some good, some bad. But hey, I still enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to the Daytona Road Course. You know how I am for Road Courses. And also there's still a Daytona. So yeah, hopefully races are good. Can't wait for it. And I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching this 
episode of Racing Topics with Ian Perez. Like, and com like comment, and subscribe for more content. Uh, follow my social accounts. Uh, don't forget to uh, follow my Discord server. Uh, don't forget to turn on my YouTube notification for more content. Thank you all for supporting Ian Nation. This is Ian Perez 48. Signing off. And that's another 500 in the books.